Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a practice test for the chemical and physical foundations of the MCAT, which is the first section on the MCAT. This way you'll be able to see my thought process as I go through the questions. And I personally love seeing this kind of stuff, so I hope you enjoy it. We'll be doing one passage with three questions in it. This passage was taken from the MCAT mini test ebook, which basically has four passages with three questions each. So there's only 12 questions total in this ebook and don't bother looking up this ebook on your own because we'll be going through all 12 questions in the next four videos and I want you to pause this video and read the passage and this passage is two pages long it's gonna be hard to understand what I'm doing if you don't understand the passage so please pause the video and read it on your own there's a couple things I noted don't worry about the exact structure of these compounds really only examine them when you need to during the question this section right here, this last part, I'm not really sure exactly what it's talking about. So just keep it in mind. Again, you wouldn't be actually talking about this during your actual exam. You just make a quick mental note of, okay, I understood everything but this last paragraph. I even read a couple parts two or three times to make sure I understood it really fast. So getting into the first question, the progress of reaction two can be monitored by observing what changed the IR spectrum. So just looking already, this is something you're going to have to already know numbers for. So if you don't, make sure when you review your exam, you go over all the IR spectrum numbers that you should have already known. So let's go look at reaction two. And we can see from here to here, we have oxygens appearing, specifically carbonyl groups. So if carbonyls are appearing after our reaction, that means we should have either A or C as an appearance. Now, is it 1700 or 3400? They are both numbers that you need to know, but I believe with carbonyls, the sharp peak at 1700 is what they look like. So you would pick C. Question two. The following kinetic parameters were obtained for the IDO catalyzed oxidation of compound three by H2O2. So yeah, oxidation of H2O2 in the presence of LTRP. Based on these data, what effect is LRP? So they gave us data here of LTRP. So this is concentration, you can tell by the units. And this is basically, um, you can also tell by the units here, second, it's basically a rate. So the rate is decreasing as you have the concentration increasing. Oxidizes compound three directly. Let's see. Obtain for the oxidation of compound three. So I believe more oxidation means a higher rate. So A would actually be helping the rate. B would be hurting the rate. That's possible. LTRP is oxidized instead of compound three. So it could be like a competitor. Does not interact. No, it does interact because we can see there's a change. So there's got to be some kind of inhibition thing going on. D, D sounds really... Uh, general and it sounds like you can't go wrong with D so even though B could be a possibility D seems like a more inclusive answer that you they can't mark you wrong for D because yeah it would inhibit the enzyme that's why your rate decreases that's perfectly logical what experiment can be used to show that compound 6 is not formed sequentially from either compound 4 or compound 5 what's it <laughs> Please don't do that on your actual exam. So that would mean like compound four, compound five goes on through an enzymatic reaction to create compound six. So let's see, conduct the reaction of compound four with, so they're saying react the two, that makes no sense. Um, oxidize compound four and five with, so this is kind of an enzymatic step to try to find compound six. So compound four, an enzyme would act on it and try to make compound six, or try to make something else which isn't compound six and prove that compound six is not formed from it. It's a possibility, reduce compound six. So I think this is trying to go backwards instead of oxidizing compound four and five, it's trying to reduce compound six to form compound five or four. That seems a little convoluted to be honest. 
Conduct the reaction of compound two with H two O two with what's compound two? Um, that looks pretty irrelevant. Sometimes we'll throw something that is pretty irrelevant, but ends up being relevant, but. It doesn't seem to be the case here. Also in the exam, you're not trying to always find the perfect answer. You're just trying to find what sounds right or what doesn't sound completely wrong. So I don't have a lot of strong feelings for B, but the other answers sound pretty wrong. So I'm going to have to go with B. That was just a brief overview of how I would tackle the chemical and physical foundations passages. And as you can see, even I don't completely understand everything about every passage, everything about every question. But if you work your way through it and use logic to eliminate wrong answers, have a good basis for choosing the right answer, then you'll be pretty set. Obviously, you also need to have your equations and stuff known and have that knowledge already ready to be used or you're not going to do well in this section. Thank you for watching. Please check out my other videos and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.